this is going to be the end result of the entire project. So I basically just say a wake word and it responds. And it's just in a loop like that. So I'm going to say something right now. I'm going to say, hey, POS. Well, the dog there, master up buns and dogs, how's it going today? How do you define the meaning of life? As an AI language model, I do not have feelings, but thank you for asking. As for the meaning of life, that is a complex and subjective question that has been debated by philosophers, theologians, and scientists for centuries. Some may argue it is to fulfill a specific purpose, others may believe it is to seek happiness and fulfillment, while some may believe it has no inherent meaning and it is up to individuals to create their own meaning. Ultimately, the answer will depend on an individual's beliefs and perspective. So in the following video, I'm going to show you guys how to make a voice assistant from scratch. Uh, the code I have in the video description, it's a GitHub repository with all of my code, maybe some simple instructions. Uh, but yeah, we're going to be starting off testing with uh, Windows 10. We're going to have a script on there. I'm going to explain you guys my logic, uh, all the files we're going to be using, uh, the installations, that kind of stuff. And then afterwards, once we know that it's working, we're going to jump over to Raspberry Pi and we're going to make sure all the audio devices are working. And then we're basically just going to run the same script. And then at that point, once you have the script running, you can literally just unplug the monitor. You can unplug the keyboard, unplug the mouse use them for something else. And this, as long as you have the uh, input, uh, the mic and the speakers connected to the Raspberry Pi, it will work autonomously. So that's kind of the plan in the end to have this little chip you can tape to the bottom of your desk like I have right now and just be able to ask it questions whenever you want and have it be smarter than a Google Home. So yeah, without any further ado, let's jump right into the video. So I already have everything written down right here, uh, all of my code is already done. So I'm not gonna type this from scratch, but I'm just gonna to explain to you guys uh, what everything actually means in here. So we do all of our importations here. I'm gonna walk you guys through how we can actually install those right now. So you're gonna do pip install uh, OS. The OS is already installed with the operating system. You do pip install open AI. Uh, pip, and, uh, pip install python dash dot env pip install uh, speech recognition uh, pi audio pi audio is a sort of a prerequisite for speech recognition you need pi audio in order for speech recognition to work and sometimes speech recognition doesn't automatically install Pi Audio, so we just do that manually. Uh, and then we're gonna need, I don't even know how to pronounce that. And then uh, NumPy. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click enter there. Uh, pip install speech. There we go. So wrong command, speech recognition, not speech underscore recognition. And then anyways, yeah. So you basically just download all these, uh, including Pi Audio. And then this little load dot, uh, dot EMB is just gonna load your environment variables. Uh, you have your open uh, AI API key here. Uh, this is gonna access it from your dot EMB file. So I currently don't have anything in here because I'm just showing you guys what it's supposed to look like. But essentially what you'd have is just a string and you'd put your little uh, API key inside of there. This model is just the GPT 3.5 Turbo, the fast chat GPT model, pretty simple. We have our recognizers, we define our, uh, we define our engines here, some greetings. So when we actually say the keyword, in this case, the keyword is gonna be POS, short for piece of shit, it's supposed to be funny, uh, hey POS, and then it would pick up on that wake word and that wake set of words, and then it would basically just randomize and give you a greeting here. So what's up master? And then since my name is Elliot, it would say, what's up master Elliot? I'd say, yeah, well, hello there master puns and jokes. How's it going today? So just some simple friendly greetings. Uh, and then we have our listen for wake word. Uh, 
listen for listen for hey pos we're in a while loop where we're listening for uh just some audio to happen and then we're going to basically convert that audio piece to a string and then we're going to look if this hey pos is in that string uh, obviously lowercase letters if that's true say like we're detected and then uh, we're just going to sort of handle uh more with that string and then we're going to actually listen and just kind of process from there so basically just the wake word function uh picking up on stuff if if it has some difficulties understanding what the wake word is it'll just uh, sort of catch this error uh and it'll pass we have our listen and responding so it's actually listening now uh, then we're going to basically just look at this piece of text after the wake word. And it's going to say, you said this piece of text. Uh, and then we're basically just going to submit this to a API call for uh, chat GPT. And then we're going to have something that's returned. So uh, just this little piece right here is uh, what is actually returned from the API. So we submit a bunch of uh, basically metadata to the API it processes that says, okay, you're using this model. Uh, this is what roles you have. Like you have system assistant and then like user roles, like basically it'll process all of this. And then all we want to do is just take this response text. That's what this is. We just access response choices, position zero message.content. That's what it is. And then it'll tell you what the actual response from OpenAI was. And then we just have an engine voice that says just the response text. Simple as that. And then Obviously we define our microphone right here and listen for our wake word. So these are functions. These aren't called right away. Uh, first it does this, it does this uh, microphone. It just basically opens our microphone, sets that as the uh, input source. And then we listen for, we declare our first function with this wake word in that source, if that makes sense. Uh, anyways. It, honestly, if you wanted, if that doesn't make sense, you could always use ChatGPT to actually define this for you and help you understand what's going on in the script. If I didn't explain it like at a super, super high level. Uh, anyways, so basically all we have to do now is after this is done, we can press play. Hey, POS. So since my mic actually wasn't working because I was using it while recording, uh, I'll just kind of walk through what it did. So it said, uh, I canceled it here. I'm actually going to expand this entire thing. So uh, I said, hey, POS, and then it said, wake word detected. It said, ahoy there, Captain Elliot, how's the ship sailing? And then I said, it's great. What about you? And then because we don't actually have this uh, API key declared in our environment variables, uh, it didn't go through and it didn't actually submit the request. However, uh, when we actually go over to our Raspberry Pi, I will make sure that that environment variable is in there and we'll actually get a response that works. So that's how we know the script is mainly working for now. And honestly, at this point, everything's working like Windows 10 is fairly easy to sort of work around. You can choose what devices you want as input and output. So it's fairly easy to manage. Uh, now we're actually going to jump over to Raspberry Pi. So see you on the other side. And one thing I wanted to add on real quick is you might not actually know how to get your API uh, key. So I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So you want to go onto the platform.openai.com slash docs slash API dash reference. You're going to go to that. You're going to go to personal uh, view API keys and you can create like a new secret key. So you go here and then uh, you could be like, I don't know, tutorial key create secret key, you copy and paste this entire thing like that. And then you can go ahead and paste that in your environment variables or just in the script if you want. So anyway, so that's how you get your API key. And by the way, you will need to set up billing in your account because uh, it does actually cost money to use uh, OpenAI or Microsoft GPUs to actually process a lot of this data. So you do need to pay a little bit amount like a little bit of money for that, like at most a few dollars per month if you're using it a lot. So it's like nothing in the grand scheme of things, but you do need to set up uh, a credit card, I believe, and some sort of billing method. 
So great. You've got your Raspberry Pi working. Uh, this is amazing. Uh, honestly, at this point, just go ahead and copy and paste your code into here. Uh, I have slightly different code. I know that python.env doesn't like 100% work in Raspberry Pi. I did, it so, I did have some issues with it, so I decided to directly copy and paste it here. I cut it off a little bit so that you know people can't use my API key and just drain out my bank account. Um, so yeah, just go ahead and install all of those libraries. Uh, that would include OpenAI, uh, speech recognition, PYTT SX3, NumPy, Pi Audio, etc. Right. So at this point, we are we have our code in here. I'm just assuming you have basically typed all of this out. There were some very minor changes, like just greetings. I just decided to replace my own name in there. Uh, you can do whatever you want with this. This doesn't really matter. And then just the API key. I would recommend just pasting it in here and just try not to show anybody. Uh, I didn't get any errors with that. So anyways, at this point, all we really have to do is make sure that our audio devices are working. And in order to do this, we can go up to the top left here and we can go into preferences. We can go into, uh, no, it wasn't that. We can go into here, interrupt signal, and then we can go ahead and do We can go ahead and do sudo raspy dash config, just like that. So now we're going to go system options. We go down to audio. So these are your these are your audio outputs. So we're going to stick with zero for now. And at this point, we can just go ahead and finish. And then this is where we're actually going to set up some of our audio. So we're going to go ahead and type. L, uh, ls usb it's going to list all of our usb devices so currently i have a razor mouse connected i have a logitech webcam uh, and then some of this other stuff ethernet adapter which is not connected i don't think uh, so yeah we just i have my my mic here and then probably something around here i'm not sure which one it is but uh, one of these are my speakers, so it's a, an audio jack. Most likely my headphones already, as you saw in the uh, config settings. So at this point, what we're going to have to do is we're going to do sudo apt-get install and then alsa-utils. So alsa-utils it's going to install ALSA or the Advanced Linux Sound Architecture Utilities, which are used to configure audio on Linux systems. So once the packages are installed, you can check if your microphone is recognized by the system by running uh, this command right here. So we're going to go a record dash L space L. And keep in mind, all these commands are going to be in the GitHub repo or GitHub repository, which is going to be in the description. So don't stress if you can't see this too much. I know this camera probably looks bright a little bit, probably can't see things, they're blurry. But uh, I will make sure that all these commands are very clear in the repository. So we can go ahead and do that. And now it's essentially going to pick up on uh, our current webcam mic which in this case is my uh, C922 webcam. So that's what said our webcam is. And what we have to look for is this right here. It says card one right here, just next to uh, what your mic is. It's going to say card. Uh, and then what we're actually going to do at this point is we're going to actually have to work with this. So we have to go sudo nano, and then we're going to go dash user dash share alpha alpha config so we're gonna have to look through some of these lines here so we're just gonna do the down arrow and we're gonna look for uh, two lines here so defaults.ctl.card0 and then defaults.pcm.card0 and 
we're going to actually uncomment these lines here. So we just have to look for PCM card and CTL card. So that looks like it's right here. So these may already be comment commented for you. You just want to make sure that uh, these are actually uncommented. And then this is going to let us sort of work with more audio devices, even though the system by default didn't want to pick them up. So all you're going to do is essentially change those. Uh, if they are, if they're uncommented now, you're going to make sure that uh, zero is now one because we're using card one instead of zero. And then that is pretty much it. So now we can, there's a command we can run uh, after this. So in order to close this, we're going to go ahead and do control O. It's going to save. We can just go control X to exit. And then we're going to go ahead and type this command in here. So we're going to go A record dash F CD dash capital D space HW colon one. We're going to do that break line and then A play. We're going to go ahead and press enter here. So what this is going to do, this is going to pick up on what we're saying. So actually, if I start talking and turn my speaker up, you're going to hear me talking and this will show that my mic is working. So as you can see, there's the echo effect, right? Uh, that's how we know that our mic is working. So if you don't get that, uh, then maybe troubleshoot, maybe look into some other issues that uh, could be occurring, maybe something to do with how you set up uh, your whole Raspberry Pi, or maybe just look at some YouTube videos. That's pretty easy to figure out for the most part is getting your uh, audio to work. And then at this point, we just essentially CD into our project, which I've already done here. So in order to actually CD into our project, I'm gonna do this from scratch here, just so you guys can see what this looks like. I'm gonna close the terminal and if I open my file explorer, give it a moment. I've actually stored my uh, Python in here. So de uh, desktop, Toshi, desktop, Python testing. This is gonna be different for you based on what you uh, sort of did in your startup settings. I'm gonna go to your folder, whatever, whatever folder you wanna put it on, doesn't really matter. And then I have my assistant here. So we know what directory this is. This is uh, desktop Python testing assistant. So you could do the same if you want Python dash testing and then assistant, and then you basically just build your project in that folder if you're coding it from scratch. And then we open our command line again. All we have to do at this point is go ahead and cd desktop, cd Python testing, cd assistant, and then in order to run the script called main.py, we're gonna go Python main, and then tab it should autofill at rest, and then this should work for us. Hey POS. It's great. So here and now, is there anything you need help with or anything you'd like to talk about? So as you can see, this isn't a super difficult project to put together. If you already have some Python experience, uh, if you do want some extra help, feel free to comment in the GitHub repo, YouTube comments, or even reach out to me personally on Discord. I'll have my Discord in uh, the GitHub repo. So you can just DM me on there, ask me questions you have. I'm pretty quick to respond because I honestly use Discord a lot. Uh, but yeah, if you enjoyed this video, consider liking, consider subscribing. You can always unlike, unsubscribe later. It's completely free. Uh, yeah, that's all I have. Thanks for watching.